Hogwarts Legacy could very well be the biggest game of 2023, and I can't wait to play it when it releases. But in the meantime, I wanted to share with you everything we know about the game so far to date, including release info, version details, the story, the characters, the gameplay, and anything else we know about the game before you buy and play it. So let's jump into it. And we'll start with Hogwarts Legacy release date history and who's making the game. Hogwarts Legacy was officially revealed at PlayStation Showcase event in September of 2020, and the trailer mentioned it was coming sometime in 2021. However, the game's first gameplay was revealed way back in 2018, when a leak was posted on Reddit. And in January of the following year, a few months after the official trailer, they revealed that the release date had been pushed back to an unknown time in 2022. That release date was to be December of 2022, but again in August of that year, the game was delayed yet again to the current release date of February the 10th, 2023, and fingers crossed there is no delay for the game this time. Now, the release dates given are for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X version along with the PC, but there is a delay to every other version of the game. Warner Brothers said the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One players will need to wait until April the 4th of 2023 to play Hogwarts Legacy, while the Switch will be delayed until at least July 25th, citing game experience issues on those platforms. Now, if you're wondering about the devs of the game, it's Avalanche Software, and it's kind of their biggest ever game, and so it's a make or break for them as developers, and they are publishing the game under the Port Key Games label who created The Wizarding World, and something we will talk about later in the video. What about then the Hogwarts Legacy pre-order editions and prices for the game? If you happen to pre-order the game, you will get access to some exclusive stuff. There's an exclusive Onyx Hippogriff mount available as a Hogwarts Legacy pre-order bonus across all platforms. PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 owners can get a Felix Felicis Potion item and access to an exclusive Haunted Hogsmeade shop quest by pre-ordering via the PlayStation Store, and I'm sure that quest will unlock at some point in the future for other platforms. There's also a Hogwarts Legacy Deluxe Edition, which includes 72 hour early access to the game, and the Dark Arts Pack, which includes additional themed items in game. The 72 hours access means that the game will actually be available for players if you pre-order on the 7th of February and not the 10th. If you want to pick up the Collector's Edition, the Limited Edition bundle comes with everything that's included in the Hogwarts Legacy Deluxe Editions, including the 72 hours early access and dark art pack, as well as a suite of other exclusive content. You'll get the Hippogriff Mount, which we talked about earlier, a Kelpie robe to dress your character in, a steel case to hold the game, and a life-size floating ancient magic wand with book base, and this will cost you no less than $295, or £275, which is a bit steep. If that's not your thing, then the other versions are like this. The standard PS5 and Xbox Series X editions will be $70, or £65. The PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions standard will be $60, or £55. And the deluxe editions for the PS5 and Series X are $80, or £75 and the deluxe editions for the standard Xbox and PlayStation 4 will be $70 or £65. So that's a little bit of detail about the game, but before we get into the story, I wanted to go over a few miscellaneous commonly asked questions that you might want to know the answer to, so here we go. Is there a multiplayer in Hogwarts Legacy? The simple answer is no, there isn't, and that includes co-op. Will Hogwarts Legacy have crossplay? Well, again, since there's no co-op or multiplayer, the answer is no. Is J.K. Rowling involved with Hogwarts Legacy? And the answer is, no, she has nothing to do with the game development or story. The only thing that's related to her in-game is that they made sure the story and characters are canon for the original Harry Potter. But other than that, nothing else is related to her. Will the game have microtransactions? Well, Warner Brothers have said there are no things to purchase in-game, but of course that's always remained to be seen. What about the game's graphics? While nothing has been accurately revealed other than the PlayStation 5 and Series X will have 4K resolution, but I assume that's only 30 FPS, and a performance mode, which will be 1440 at 60 FPS, again though nothing is concrete on those details. We also know they're using the Unreal Engine for the project, and the PC version will support NVIDIA's DLSS 3 technology, which boosts performance for all GeForce RTX GPUs by using AI to output higher resolution frames from a lower resolution input. And the full list of Hogwarts Legacy PC system requirements can be seen on screen. Alright, let's get into the meat of the game and talk about the story. 
While it's an open world action RPG that lets you fully explore Hogwarts and the surrounding world, something I will cover a little more in detail later on. The game is set in the late 1800s, long before Harry Potter's time, which was roughly in the 1990s. And so Harry Potter, or any of the main characters from Harry Potter, are not in the game, but some faces you will recognise. Nearly Headless Nick and Fat Friar are two that we've seen in game trailers, but since two of the four house ghosts have been seen, it's safe to say that the Grey Lady of Ravenclaw and the Bloody Baron of Slytherin will be in the game as well. We know that you begin the game as a fifth year student at Hogwarts and you may hold the clues to an ancient secret that threatens the wizarding world. We've also seen a few subplots mentioned in the game, such as references to the Goblin Rebellion and a number of characters with their own secrets going on. Now, some have asked whether you can play the game as an evil character, and while the trailers say you can lead a darker path, nothing so far has suggested a true multiple paths in the game, but does it mean that can't happen? On the official FAQ it says Hogwarts Legacy will have various storylines that can affect what kind of wizard you can become, but we know all too well from games like Cyberpunk that devs struggle to deliver on this type of gameplay, other than a few different lines of dialogue or maybe multiple endings, so I'm guessing it's probably more of a you'll have to roleplay playing an evil character than actually choosing that as a playstyle, rather than there being multiple outcomes in the game. Now, speaking of gameplay, you'll be able to create your own character, sort them into a house, and then roleplay as a student at Hogwarts. You will learn new magical abilities and how to brew potions and classes, face off against creatures and dark powers in one-to-one -one combat out in the world. You will level up your skills and equipment as you gain your experience, and there are four difficulty settings for you to experience in-game story, easy, normal, and hard but there is no difficulty related achievements or trophies, so ultimately you can play however you want to. The game is open world and so not only will there be an entire of Hogwarts to explore, there is the surrounding Highlands area that includes familiar places like the Forbidden Forest and Hogsmeade Village. Hogwarts itself will have plenty of secrets and hidden rooms to find but might require solving some puzzles to get into them. Now depending on which house you choose in Hogwarts Legacy, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Slytherin and Ravenclaw, each will have their own exclusive common room which will look completely different to each other. There are areas where you'll be able to relax and interact with fellow students and meeting NPCs and find unique items and locations within the dorms. So make sure you take a look at the common rooms before you choose your house. Collectibles include demigod statues or hidden memories, which you see in the gameplay reveals and a few other things as well. And there are hidden treasures to be found out in the world, which can be led to by butterflies. So look out for butterflies while you play. Other treasures, like Dissolution Chest, require you to find a way to unlock them, and one of the ways that we know so far is to become invisible, but I think each chest will require a different thing in order to unlock it. Cairn Dungeons can be explored in the world as well, and you can be on the lookout for Moonstones on your travels as they are needed to unlock new things in the Room of Requirement. And if you're worried about travelling around this large open world, then don't be, because Flu Flames allow players to instantly fast travel from one area to another. There's also a flying class which will help you master the art of broomstick flying and will make exploring Hogwarts Castle grounds a little easier. And unfortunately, while there is broom flying in the game, there will be no Quidditch at Hogwarts Legacy that you will be able to play. But it's not been confirmed if it will still exist in game as say a cutscene or some other way, but players will not be able to take part in Quidditch in Hogwarts Legacy. When you start the game, you will choose a preset character to start with and go deeper to gradually select your face shape, hairstyle, complexion and eyes. There's no sliders to change, all of the options are split across an array of presets, which is probably not the most ideal thing to add into an RPG. You can choose your character's voice and whether they stay in the witch or wizard dormitories in dependence of their appearance though. Now in your time in Hogwarts, you will come across a bunch of other NPCs and companions. Right now there are four Hogwarts Legacy companions confirmed, Nat Sayonai, Poppy Sweeting, Amit Thakar and Sebastian Salo. Each companion will teach you different things, and so you must pick wisely the one that you go with. Although, from the achievements and trophies, I think you might be able to recruit all four within one playthrough and play their set of quests one after each other, but that has not been confirmed. There are also a lot of NPCs in game that we know of. A goblin called Ranrock, a house elf called Deke, a teacher called Professor Fig, to name a few. And there is also plenty of students who will give you quests, like Zenobia, a young Ravenclaw student who invites you on a gobstone quest, which we've seen in one of the gameplay trailers. 
A bunch of magical creatures will also be encountered when you're in Hogwarts Legacy. So far we have seen Neasles, Nifflers, Hippogriffs, Dragons, Graphorns, Mooncalves and Trolls. In game you will also have an area called the Vivarium where you can tame and nurture these creatures. And there's also an achievement or trophy for that as well. And there are other more mythical creatures like the Phoenix that we know of. What about Hogwarts Legacy Combat? While combat consists of casting magic on your opponents, you'll be able to wield the wand and learn spells taught in classes and learn from other companions you meet at the school. There are a total of 20 spells that you can assign to slots for use in combat and you can freely build combos between those spells and base magic shots, limited only by brief cooldown windows. Spells fit into categories like damage or control and these categories are colour coded to help you break the shields of enemy spell slingers. You can also dodge in combat to avoid some attacks, a very useful combat mechanic for any game. And dueling feats are optional field guide collectibles where you will challenge other wizards to a duel and it will help you learn some of these new combat techniques, however they are optional. You'll also be able to imbue your combat abilities by brewing potions back at the school so you better show up to your potions class and you will be able to boost your effectiveness in combat by investing XP into a talent system which will allow you to further hone your playstyle. The talent system is split into five types and you can upgrade depending on your playstyle and skills. And the styles of the talents we know so far are Room of Requirement, Stealth and Core and there are two other ones which are unknown. You can also upgrade your clothing, add traits and alter the appearance of your clothing although the details of exactly what this looks like and whether it will affect combat is still to be seen. When you're at Hogwarts you will be able to take part in classes. You will attend classes such as Charms, Defense Against the Dark Arts, Herbology and Potions to help you learn new spells, brewing potions, grow magical plants and more. The more classes you attend the more skills you will learn and the more you will improve them as well so make sure you always show up to them. Now we talked about earlier can you be evil in game and while it's unclear what we do know is that the dark spells are in the game allowing you to kill and torture other players. All three unforgivable curses Imperio, Crucio and Avada Kedavra are available to learn and play in game and all will have devastating outcomes like one hit kills. Lastly, there are ancient spells you can learn, and these are part of the game's main story where you discover and unlock them. Now, when you first arrive at Hogwarts, you are a fifth year, but you will still take part in the sorting ceremony when you join Hogwarts. This will allow you to choose your house, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw or Slytherin. This will determine what common room and sleeping quarters you will get access to in-game. But you can choose your house early on in the Wizarding World website answering questions to get sorted into your house before the game launches and link to the game when it releases. On Wizarding World you can also choose your Patronus before the game launches although it hasn't actually been confirmed that Patronuses are even in the game but you can still do it just in case and you can pick your wand before launch as well and that is in game. Lastly there are a few rewards for connecting your game to the Wizarding World account and they are the House Fanatic Robes and Beaked Skull Mask. Guys, that is it. I think everything you need to know about Hogwarts Legacy from release details, gameplay, story, combat and secrets. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe for more Hogwarts Legacy content up to and after release. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.